All right. Good morning to the Plattsburgh House of Prayer. Uh, we're excited to have you here. If you don't know, I'm Pastor Jesse. Uh, so glad that you could spend uh, your Sunday morning with us. Uh, I want to welcome those watching online. We're so glad you're here. Uh, you might not be here physically, but you're with us spiritually. We know God is moving in your life. Uh, and us in here, we're, we come together because we believe God is doing something. We just don't come together because it's what you do on Sundays. We come together to worship and praise a real and living God. Amen. So let's do that this morning. Father God, I just believe for your Holy Spirit to be poured out without measure in this place. But not only in this place, but God, those that are home watching, Father, whether in their kitchen or their living room, God, open hearts. Uh, receive the spirit of the Lord. So, Father, I pray that you would touch them even right where they're at, God, as they watch online. God, move mightily in their lives. And God, move in this place. Release your spirit of life in Jesus' mighty name. All right, let's worship Jesus this morning. Let's stand to our feet.
dig up your young. I know that it's so easy. I dig up your bark in the sun. I dig up your young. I know that it's so easy. I dig up your bark in the sun. And I'm holding on to your I'm holding on and I'm not letting go. It's not my zeal, it's that your love is strong. It's not my strength, it's that your faith. When I am weak, that's when you. Your heart is for me. It was never against me. God, you have a purpose even when I can't see it. It's not by my zeal, but it's yours, God. It's not by my strength. It's by his faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. As we worship this morning, <laughs> I was reminded of the second coming of Jesus Christ. You do know that Jesus comes again, right? as the God-man, to rule on the throne and to rule over the earth. You know, Psalms 2 says, you know, the Father in heaven, he sits on his throne and he, he laughs as the, ki the kings of the earth balk at him and mock him. And he says, I have chosen my anointed one. I have chosen Jesus to sit on the throne and rule the earth. So Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, did you know that he actually makes his way to Israel? And he makes his way to Jerusalem, to that throne. And on his way to Jerusalem, he stops and he sets people free. 
You see, he stops where, where people have been bound and thrown in prison, where people have been crushed by the world, where people have been destroyed and wounded and, and misused and abused and oppressed by this world, and they're thrown in prison and they're slaves. And Jesus, on his way to Jerusalem, he breaks open the prison doors, amen, and he reaches in and he frees them from the oppression that they have lived with, amen. But until that day, until that second coming, there's another freedom that Christ paid for on the cross. Amen. And he told his disciples as he made his way to sit at the right hand of the Father for a season. He said, go. Go into the earth and proclaim my gospel that there is a freedom now and forevermore that you can experience. And if you yourself have found yourself in some kind of prison or some kind of tomb and you need the resurrection life of Jesus Christ, it's here for you today. Amen. That's what the cross paid for. That's what Jesus came to do. There is a spiritual resurrection. There is a spiritual freedom that God has for you today. And if you're watching online and you're saying, man, that's me. I need a resurrection today. I need a newness of life. I need Jesus to pull me out of this prison cell that I find myself in. Today is your day because the spirit of God, the spirit of Jesus Christ reaches in even now and pulls you out and says, I free you. I free you from the shame. I free you from the bondage. I free you from the oppression. No longer is it yours to carry, but I have made you a new creature in Christ today. And you might be saying, yeah, but God, I messed up. I messed up big time. Well, today is your day because mercy is new every morning. Mercy is new every morning. You see, the grace of God gives us a fresh start. That's what grace is. Grace doesn't overlook. Grace doesn't tolerate. Grace gives you a fresh start, and today is your fresh start by the grace of God. Amen. So, God, we just receive your gift. If that's you today, either watching online or here today, just, just lift up your hands and receive the freedom that God has for you, the resurrection life that God has for you today. Father, release, release a fresh anointing, God. May it wash over us, God, and release the freedom of the Lord. Now, God, release the freedom of the Lord to those in this place and those watching online. Release the freedom of God that takes us from our prison cells and frees us from bondage and oppression and sets us free to love God and to love the life that he's given us. And, Father, we just receive the life of your spirit, God, free, free today to live for you. Oh, God, release that grace now. In Jesus' mighty name, oh, glory to almighty God. God is for you. God has life, resurrection life for you. And if you so choose today, you can be a, a new creature in Jesus Christ. Just receive. Receive him opening that prison cell and saying, I have something so much better for you. Let's follow him today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for this time of praise and worship, Lord. And I, I just thank you for your faithfulness, God. It's not by what we can do. God, we can't open the prison cell, but you can. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, that you never leave us where we're at. That's the grace of God. It washes over us. It follows us. It hunts us down. It's the grace of God. Today is a fresh day in the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's give the Lord a shout this morning. Praise the Lord. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. may be seated. All right, as our worship team, uh, man, God is good. Holy Ghost. Yeah. I'm telling you, <laughs> I remember when, when I first encountered God, I was just blown away that God was real, right? And I remember, I remember going to all my friends, and they just thought I was a weirdo, because I'm like, man, God is real. <laughs> God is real. God wants to reveal himself to you. That's the nature of God. He longs to. God isn't some 
hiding in some mysterious place. He longs to reveal himself to you. And I remember telling my friends, man, just, just ask him. Just ask him. Say, God, reveal yourself and mean it in your heart. And God will. God will show up when you need him. God will show up with the revelation of who he is. And they looked at me like, whoa, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's true. My life was changed because I knew God was real, and I knew God cared for every person on this planet, and it was God's heart and desire to illuminate, to reveal himself to everyone. Man, just, just ask him. Just ask him, and I can give you a biblical example, and that's not what I was going to preach on today, so I won't go into it. <laughs> Maybe another time. Uh, yeah, but, but God is a God of relationship, and, and God loves to be asked. Amen? <laughs> Abraham, don't pass me by. God, come sit with me. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. All right. So uh, God is a good God. Uh, now I'm going to preach on that today, right? <laughs> I can't help uh, but get on this place and let my, my heart explode for who God is because I've encountered such a good, good God. But before we get into the, the talk that I have for us today, I do want to answer a question. Some of, uh, of the people here or even online have been asking, how can I give uh, to P-Hop? And I think we have a, a, maybe our slides aren't working right now, but we do have a slide with five different ways to give. I think we can text to give. Uh, you can give online. You can give through our church center app. Uh, and you can give in person behind these doors over here on the outside uh, of this room. There's actually a box that says tithes and offerings, and you can actually physically put your tithes and offerings in that uh, particular box. But I want to just thank everyone here in this room and everyone watching online for your generosity. You guys are such a giving people. You guys have such a heart for, for God to, to reach people, but not only that, for to, to invest in your community. And when you do give, I want to just remind everybody, when you give to the Plattsburgh House of Prayer, you're not just giving to the Plattsburgh House of Prayer, you're actually giving to JCEO, too. We, we, we uh, give as, a, as an organization, the Plattsburgh House of Prayer, we give to the JCEO knowing that they, they give food to those who need food. They even give emergency housing to those who need emergency housing. We see the value in our community in that. So we give to that. We give to the Salvation Army. So when you give to us, you're giving to the Salvation Army. You're making sure their, their food shelves are stocked every week for people in need. And if you give to the Plattsburgh House of Prayer, you're actually sending doctors into war-torn areas in the Middle East where no one wants to go to, right? Except for select few doctors that I'll go, and we help fund them and get them to where they need to be in war-torn uh, uh, areas of the Middle East, and they go to bring medical aid and also a message of hope with them, amen? And so when you give the Plattsburgh House of Prayer, you're giving to that. You're also giving to outreaches that we do here at as the Plattsburgh House of Prayer. We just did our cereal giveaway, right, B uh, Trunker Cereal. That was a fun event. Uh, we gave over 300 boxes of cereal, supplied over 75 families with cereal in this region. And we're so glad to be able to give back to Plattsburgh because we love Plattsburgh. All right, there we go. We love Plattsburgh. Amen. Uh, so when you give, you're giving to that. Uh, and also, when you give, you're giving to moments like this where people can encounter the presence of God, encounter his Holy Spirit, and encounter his message of hope. Amen. Uh, so uh, if I want to thank everyone for giving and their generosity. And if you haven't got on board with this, with this mission of PHOP to really change our city, I encourage you today, get on board with giving. Because uh, you're not just giving to an organization. Uh, yes, you're giving to turn these lights on on a weekly basis uh, and all those things. But you're also giving and changing that money that you give into an encounters with a real and living God. Amen. Uh, so if you're not on board, get on board. Give. Amen. All right. And uh, I think I had a few more announcements before I wanted to get into my message here. I thought I'd have a lot of time today, but I'm running short. Uh, we have our small group fair is today. Yes, a after the 11 o'clock service. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, you're going to be napping. Uh, if you want to come back, you're always welcome to come back to our 11 o'clock and, and hang out with us after the service. We have our small group fair. We're going to have cider and donuts. We're going to have fellowship. 
Uh, but you're also going to be able to see all the groups that are available uh, for you to kind of join and be a part of and grow in relationship and fellowship and grow in your faith. Uh, so that is after the second service. Uh, so if you want to stick around, you can. If you want to come back, you're more than welcome to uh, share in that event. And also our youth group is meeting Wednesday night. So if you have a teen, come on out Wednesday nights at 7. Uh, we have a great time. We just started last week, uh, had an excellent time, and I'm looking forward to the following week. And uh, our basic, if you're a college student or if you know a college student, send them this way on Monday nights at 7. Uh, our basic group has an excellent time too. Uh, and what else? I know there was, that was it. Growth track, that was it. We are starting our in-house growth, tra growth track. Uh, growth track is basically if you are here at the Plattsburgh House of Prayer and you're like, man, I really like what's going on here and I want to be a part of it, growth track is your next step. Uh, and that's going to be offered at our 11 o'clock service starting in October. Uh, so the first Sunday of October, there's going to be a class offered, which is called Step 1. And you're going to go, you're going to hear about our church, our mission, and our desire for our community and how God brought us here. Uh, and then there's three other steps after that uh, in the consecutive weeks following week one. Uh, but growth track, if you're interested in kind of getting on board and becoming a part and, and doing uh, some of the things that we're doing, growth track is your next step. So look that up uh, and find out more about it if you need to. All right. And I think that's it for my announcements. Thank you, Jesus. So let's just take a moment to ready our hearts to receive the word of God this morning. Father, I just thank you for your goodness and your grace. God, and I thank you for your Holy Spirit that is here. Jesus, you're in this place. Jesus, you're, you're there with those watching online saying, God, I need more of you. Jesus, you're in that place. You're in their living room. You're in their kitchen, wherever they might be. Jesus, you're in this place. And God, we, we expect the spirit of wisdom and revelation, just like Paul prayed in Ephesians. He said, pour out a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Enlighten the eyes of our heart. And I pray that same prayer today. God, that a spirit of wisdom and revelation would take your word and, 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 and illuminate the revelation of Jesus Christ and who he is and who we are in you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're uh, actually been doing a series called Elijah. Uh, it's been a fun series, a series I've enjoyed. I don't know if you've enjoyed it, but I've enjoyed it. All right, we've got two people here that enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's been super good, uh, and we're actually in our third week. So as I jump into kind of continuing on with our series uh, uh, called Elijah, I'm going to start with a question or, or really kind of ask you a question. Are you asking yourself, does prayer really work? Are you somewhere in your life, maybe your spiritual life, or maybe not even your spiritual life, this, this, maybe just even in life and the idea that there might be a God out there somewhere, are you asking yourself, does prayer really work? Maybe you've been praying for your marriage, maybe you've been praying for health, maybe you've been praying for addiction, uh, maybe you've been praying uh, for relationships, maybe you've been praying for your kids, and you are left wondering, is God even listening? Is God even listening to my prayers? Does prayer really work? Uh, so today we're going to look into the life of Elijah because Elijah was a man who understood prayer. Elijah was a man who understood prayer. Uh, in fact, let's go to, uh, let's start out with James 5. We're going to be in the book of James and uh, uh, the book of 1 Kings 18. So if you want to get your Bible out, you can. Uh, but I think we do have some slides for us today. We're going to start out with James 5, 17. And it reads this, Elijah was a man just like us. Elijah was a man just like us. In other words, he wasn't super spiritual. He wasn't born with some kind of innate ability that no one else has, right? He wasn't, you know, gifted with piety, you know, this religiousness that he could just somehow pray and things happen or, or God would, would speak to him and no one else. No, it, it says Elijah was a man just like us. That's important for us to understand. That God is no, not a respecter of persons. And anyone that we deem close to God or anyone that we deem, you know, somehow, you know, uh, prays and, and has effective prayers, they're just like us. There's nothing special about them. In fact, God is inviting you into the same place. 
Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. Let's say that together. He prayed earnestly would not rain. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it goes on to say, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. For three and a half years. He prayed earnestly. He prayed boldly, knowing that God hears and answers from heaven. Amen? And the question for us is, do we pray earnestly? Do we pray earnestly? Do we pray boldly, knowing that God hears from heaven? Because it's really, it's, it's really us who determines if we're wishing or praying. Can I say that? It's really us who determines whether we're wishing for something or we're praying for something. And after Elijah prayed, three and a half years of no rain or not even dew came and went. And the showdown between the one true God and the false God takes place. And we talked about that last week. This is a plug. Uh, go to our website uh, or Facebook and find last week's message. Uh, we talked about that showdown between the one true God and the false gods. And after that takes place, finally Elijah senses that God is about to release rain after three and a half years. In fact, verse 31, Elijah says, there is, there is the sound of a heavy rain. And we know from Scripture that's going to be coming, that we're going to read here shortly, that there actually wasn't a physical rain happening or even on its way. What Elijah was saying is, I sense that the Lord is about to release a heavy rain. He was sensing something. There was, there was a revelation that he had of what God wanted to do, and it was because of relationship. It was because of relationship. And a good question for me and a good question for you is, are we close enough to God to, God to know his heart? Are we close enough to God to know his heart about my marriage, about my family, about my kids, about my community, right? Because here we see Elijah, because he had a, revela or a, rev or, uh, a relationship that's what I meant to say. Because he had a relationship with a real and living God, there was a sense in his spirit of what God could do and what God wanted to do. Amen? And I want to take it just even simply back to my day of salvation. My day of salvation. I read the word of God, which is basically God's love note to humanity and God's revelation of who he is and what he's doing to humanity and how he feels about you. And I read through his word how God felt about me and how much God loved me and that he died that I might receive the free gift of forgiveness. And that I might come into a real relationship with him and that I was created for this very thing. You see, and it, and it was the word that illuminated the revelation of God's heart to me. And when I said, oh, Jesus, forgive me, forgive me my sins. God, I just want to spend the rest of my life with you. I promise to make you Lord and Savior of my life, and I'm going to follow you all the days of my life. And salvation in that moment took place in my heart. And the Spirit of God filled me. And I have never been alone ever since because I, I've been walking with a real and living God, and his name is Jesus. And he's given me his Holy Spirit. Right? And it was my connection to the word of God that revealed God's heart for me. Amen. How many of you are in the word of God having the heartbeat of God revealed to you on a daily basis? Right? And if we want effective prayers, if we want to be a people of effective prayers, we have to draw near to God. We have to draw. And if, if it, just get in the word and draw near to God and find out what God feels about your children what God feels about your family, what God feels about for the city of Plattsburgh. You know why I love Plattsburgh? Because Jesus loves Plattsburgh. Amen? And you know why I know there's a move of God coming to Plattsburgh? Because Jesus wants a move of God to come to Plattsburgh. Jesus wants to reach into every area of this community and release a hope of salvation, an eternal salvation that frees people from the bondage 
of what they might find themselves in. It's the word of God that tells me that. And as I draw near the heartbeat of God, I know who he is. And I get a sense that there's something coming for Plattsburgh. And here we have Elijah. He's, he's in relationship with God. And he has this showdown with the, the, the sacrifices. And he's like, man, there's a heavy rain coming. I can feel it in my heart. I can feel it in my heart. And then we dive, dive into 1 Kings 18, 42, verse 44. It says, Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, which was a mountain, and bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. Picture that. And then he said, go look toward the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. And it goes on. There is nothing there, he said. This was the servant. There's nothing there, Elijah. Seven times Elijah said, go back. Go back and look. Go back and look. And the seventh time, the servant repeated, man, it seems to be a cloud the size of a man's hand. And it's rising from the sea. And it's actually from these scriptures, these few scriptures, that I want to pull out some principles that will help us in our prayers. Amen. Amen. They're going to help us in our prayers. So number one is effective prayers are humble prayers. Effective prayers are humble prayers. Scripture says Elijah bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. Right? How humbling is that to get down on the ground and get on your knees and just bow, prostrate your face between your knees and begin to pray. Amen? And this was the, he, he physically humbled himself before an awesome and mighty God. See, he knew who God was. That God was far bigger than who he, he could ever be or anyone that could ever be on the earth. That God was God. That God created heaven and earth. That God simply spoke and creation existed, right? He had a revelation of the majesty and the awesomeness of God. So he humbled himself before a mighty God. And it was a statement that God is the only one who can. Elijah needed rain, and he knew God was the only one who can. And he put his face between his knees, and he's humbled himself. He was kind of trumpeting this idea that, that we're incapable but God. We're incapable but God. When it comes to healing, I'm incapable but God. You know, when it, when it comes to provision, when it comes to help, when it comes to creating, when it comes to transforming a human, heart, uh, a human heart, I'm incapable, but God. But God. And he humbled himself. In the book of James, verses 4, 6 through 10, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Humble and humility precedes the miraculous in our lives. Being humble and humility precedes the miraculous in our lives. Uh, it's, it's humility that fully depends on God, and it's humility that opens the door for God to really move and work in your life and through your life, but it takes humility. An effective prayer is a humble prayer. Amen. Okay, number two, effective prayers are specific prayers. Effective prayers are specific prayers. How many of us have these kind of generic prayers in our arsenal, right? Like, oh, God, can you help me somehow, <laughs> right? Uh, God, you know, uh, just be with us today. Uh, you know, we just have these generic prayers that are kind of general in nature that we sometimes throw out there. You know, I'm kind of, it's kind of like I'm not sure what I really want. I just kind of want more, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm not sure what I really want, but I just want more. And I want to make this statement. We do not wish for God to do anything. We believe God to do something. When you're, when you're praying, when you're facing, you know, the God who created all the heavens and the earth, when we're, when we're facing the God who, who created humanity out of the dust of the earth and breathed life into them, when, when you're praying to our Father in heaven, we just don't wish for, for something, anything to happen. We pray for something to happen, right? 
We believe God to do something. And we see Elijah, he told his servant seven times to go look for something specific, right? He said, no, go back. It's coming. Look for it. No, go back. It's coming. Look for it. I am praying for rain, and I know God is going to send rain. So Elijah sent his servant looking for something specific. And if, if my son is struggling with his identity, it, it's best for me not to just say, hey, God, do anything, something, help him, whatever it might be. No, what I need to do is pray for something. God, release the identity of God in his life. Father God, break in and break off the lies of the enemy that say he's something else but a child of God. God, fill him with the integrity destined for him to walk in. God, fill him with the power of the Holy Spirit that you created him to carry and to reveal to those around him. You see, that's praying for something specific. It's saying, God, you will. God, come and deliver. It's not saying, God, we just, I don't know, just help. And we do that a lot, right? Because we don't know what to pray for. I know how God feels about my son. I know how God feels about my son. And I know what God wants to do in my son. Because I know the heart of God for my son. Amen? We, don't wish, we do not wish for God to do anything. We believe God to do something, and we pray specific prayers. Amen? James verse four, uh, chapter 4, verse 2 says, You do not have because you do not ask God. You do not have because you do not ask God. What are you praying for? What are you praying for? What are you praying for online? Be specific. Amen. Number three, effective prayers are persistent prayers. Persistent prayers. First Kings 18, uh, I believe it's verse 43, says, go and look. Go and look. But the servant came back and said, there, there's nothing there. Seven times Elijah said, go back. <laughs> what you didn't hear from Elijah, what... Uh, from Elijah is probably what many of us would say, like, oh, God doesn't care. Is God really listening, right? We pray a few times, and it's like, I guess that's not, it's not in the stars, right? It's not in the stars. No. Elijah knew the heart of God. Elijah knew what God wanted to do, and he prayed specific prayers, and he was persistent, knowing that God would come through. And he kept praying, and he kept praying, and he kept praying. He was persistent, right? He was persistent. Elijah does not allow what the outward circumstances look like to affect his inward assurance in God. Let me repeat that because that's really good. Say, that's good, Pastor Jesse. <laughs> Elijah does not allow what the outward circumstances look like to affect his inward assurance in God. That God is able. I don't care what it looks like right now. I know what God wants to do. I know what God can do. And I'm persistent in it. And I'm not allowing what I'm seeing on the outward affect my inward confidence of what God can do. He persistently prays knowing. We too often give up on God because of our unbelief. That's, that's the, when it, when it comes to the faithful one, uh, that's the, the worst thing you can do is, is, is come to him in unbelief because he is so faithful and he is able. Amen. James uh, 5, 16 says, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The persistent prayer of a righteous person avails much. And here I wanted to touch on what, is he, what does he mean by righteousness, right? What does he mean by righteousness? Is there, is there a certain level of righteousness that I have to get to in order for my prayers to be heard in any way, in order for them to carry any weight? Uh, and one of the first, worst things that we can do is actually interpret this ourselves, <laughs> and, and I promise you, one of the worst things you'll ever do in your life is think that you have the responsibility to interpret God's scripture for yourself. 
right? See, God's scripture always interprets his scripture. So he says, uh, the prayer of a righteous person avails much. Uh, and when we look in Genesis 15, 6, we're looking at the life of Abraham. And it, God calls Abraham out of uh, a, a people and calls him to go into the promised land, as we hear about in biblical uh, scripture. And he begins to walk with God, and he begins to follow God, and he begins to live his life for God. And there's a scripture in Genesis 15, verse 6, and it says, And he believed the Lord, and he, God, counted it to him as righteousness. He believed God, and it counted to him as righteousness. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. In other words, Abraham wholeheartedly set the course of his life to believe and follow God. And God said, because of that, you're righteous in my eyes. And that takes place again, right? The Bible says we don't, we don't go to God on our own merit or in our own, because of our own righteousness. But when we come to salvation, we're actually receiving the righteousness of Jesus Christ when we lay down our lives and believe in who he is and follow him wholeheartedly. And what James is saying in this scripture is when you wholeheartedly set the course of your life to believe and to follow God, God hears your prayers. Amen? God hears them and responds. You want effective prayers, then give your wholehearted uh, life to God. However that sounds. That didn't sound right to me, but hopefully it, it just, it, it'll go. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the persistent prayer of someone who believes God wholehearted or wholeheartedly follows God avails much. What are you praying for? What are you praying for? Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your job. You know, maybe it's your neighbor. And you've given up. Don't. Don't give up. Believe and persist. Believe and persist. All right. So one, we have effective prayers are humble prayers. Two, we have effective prayers are specific prayers. Three, we have effective prayers are persistent prayers. And number four, effective prayers are expectant prayers. Effective prayers are expectant prayers. All right, in 1 Kings 18.44, it says, The seventh time the servant reported a cloud. I can see it. It's tiny. A cloud the size of a man's hand is rising from the sea. And let's look at Elijah's response. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elijah's servant kind of must have looked back at the little tiny cloud. <laughs> looked back at Elijah. You sure you want me to tell Ahab? You better get going. <laughs> right? And he's like, yeah, go tell him. He's like, Ugh. you sure you don't want to wait and see if God really comes through? Right? <laughs> <laughs> you might want to wait to see if God comes through on his promise. But Elijah had an expectation that when God moved, God moved. Even in the smallest size cloud, he's like, man, that's God moving. And if God is moving, God is going to move. No matter how small the beginnings. Amen. Amen. And today I'm, I'm telling you, church, do not despise small beginnings. Do not despise small beginnings. You know, I remember we, we just have a heart for people to understand the, the gospel message and the hope of Jesus Christ. And we, we, we started saying, man, we're just going to, you know, deliver the gospel on a weekly basis. We're just going to love the city of Plattsburgh. And uh, we're just going to, you know, inv have a message of hope on our lips. And I remember... The, you know, we had, I think in the first year, we had over 15 salvations. And some might look in and say, only 15 salvations. And I remember thinking to myself, man, God, it's only 15 salvations. But God was saying, listen, I'm moving. And what he sparked this scripture in my heart. And he says, do not despise the small beginnings. You know, prepare. See that I'm moving and believe when I move, I am moving and begin to prepare for the greatest, greater harvest. And Elijah took 
told his servant, yes, it might be a small cloud, but you need to get ready and you need to be prepared because even when I move in the small things, man, I am moving and I do nothing small. And that's why the word says, do not despise the small beginnings because God never ends up doing small things. He just sometimes starts small things because when the ball of God gets moving, it gets moving. Amen. And I want to encourage you today, wherever you are in your life, maybe you're praying for your kids and your and your kid just, you know, mentioned Jesus at one time and you're like, man, he mentioned Jesus. Get excited. <laughs> No kid mentions Jesus without God moving in their lives, amen? And we began to realize that no one is walking through these doors because they wanted to. Who on a Sunday morning is going to walk through the church doors? If someone is walking through the church doors and they're willing to come through them, that means God is moving in their life and God is doing something. And do not despise the small beginnings, Plattsburgh House of Prayer, because God is on the move, amen? Let's give a shout to God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Woo! If I get a worship team here, we're going to kind of wrap this up. Uh, Mark eleven twenty four 24 reads this. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Man, pray for something. Don't wish for anything. Pray for something and believe that God can deliver. Amen? Pray in faith and believe. And we go on to 1 Kings 18, 45, and it says, Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose. A heavy rain came on, and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. The small beginnings of a small cloud (laughs) turned into a heavy, heavy rain. Keep praying. Don't despise the small beginnings. Be persistent. Because God answers prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And some of you need a heavy rain in your life. Some of you need a heavy rain. God, I need you. God, I need your presence to show up in my life. Let's stand. need a heavy rain. Thank you, Jesus. So what have you stopped praying for? Thank you, Jesus. What have you stopped praying for? Is it your family? Is it your friends? Is it your coworkers? Is it your purpose? Is it the gift of, gifts of God in your life? Is it to see the miraculous with your own eyes? What if you stop praying? Today's the day to get on your knees and to humble yourself and to pray those specific prayers and begin to pray persistent prayers and begin to pray expectant prayers. Thank you, Jesus. If you've stopped praying and you say, man, I need to get back to it. I need to reset my prayer life. And I need to take these four principles and get them back a part of my life. If that's you, just raise your hand in this place. You watching online, just raise your hand. Even back in your kitchen or living room, man, God is there. Just raise your hand, not before me, but before God. And say, God, I'm a man or a woman just like Elijah. And Father, I need need you to move. And God, I'm going to reset my heart in my life to begin to believe for the greater things, to believe for the promises that you've given, and to go deep into the word of God and to know the very heart of a real and living God. And I will know your heartbeat for those around me and for my community and my workplace. And God, from that place of knowing you, I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to pray for the release of God and the release of your Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for eyes to be opened. I'm going to pray to see captives set free, God, from addiction. 
I'm going to pray for healing to be released in the bodies of people who need healing. And God, I'm praying for the destiny of my kids. And I release the destiny of God in their lives. And I will see it come to pass because God is who he says he is. And his name is Jesus. And his name is above every name. And we declare that in our lives. And we declare that in the heavens over Plattsburgh. God, you will have your way in Jesus' mighty name. Release a fresh anointing, an Elijah anointing, to see the heavy rains begin to flow in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. There it is. Oh, Jesus. There it is. Oh. Today is a new day, and the anointing is upon you. Man, can you feel it? Who, Jesus. There's a fresh mantle on your life for prayer. God, we receive it. And we don't look at it as commonplace, but God, we've been granted something special. The eternal glory of an intercessor, God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we receive that in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, God, you're doing something special. Thank you, Lord. Before we end, if you're someone out there that's kind of like, man, this is, this is different. <laughs> I've heard about Jesus, but I've never given my life to him in any way. I've never known him as my personal savior. I've never known him as a God that I can know his heart. I've never received his forgiveness. I just know, man, I am far from God. In my life... <laughs> I'd be embarrassed if I showed up before God with my way my life is right now. If that's you, I want to give you an invitation. Because God can set you free from that shame. And God can pull you out of the prison that this world has put you in. And he can bring you into the very heart of God where you can know his presence and you can know his Holy Spirit. And that you can walk with him for all the days of your life. And if that's you saying, man, I'm feeling God, he's drawing me. I want this. I want this in my life. I want to make God my Lord and Savior. I want to know his heart. It's real simple. We just ask. We receive his forgiveness. And let's do that now. If that's you in this place, just raise your hand. And don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Say, man, I need this. I need this relationship. I need this God. I want to follow him all the days of my life. I want to know the heartbeat of a creator God. If that's you, just raise your hand. If you're watching online, man, put your hand up loud and proud and say, that's me. I want that. Thank you, Jesus. And let's pray this all together. We're family here. Father God, forgive me my sins. Forgive this is a prayer. Sins. God is hearing. God, forgive me my sins. God, forgive me my sins. Wash me clean. Wash me clean. For you are the only one that can. For you are the only one that can. And God, I give you my life. God, I give you my life. And I get down on my knees. And I get down on my knees. And I humble myself before you. And I humble myself before you. And I say, you are the Lord and God of my life. And I promise to follow you all of my days. And I promise to follow you all of my days. And I now receive your Holy Spirit. And I now receive your Holy Who? Spirit. Jesus. And if you prayed that prayer, I promise you, God heard from heaven. And he's not only washed you clean, he's not only forgiven you, he's not only filled you with his Holy Spirit, he has made you a new creature in Christ. Today is a new day. Walk out of that prison cell. It's just you and Jesus now. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I just thank you for the salvations that we receive today, Father, that there is a new eternal child of God. And Father, I pray your blessings over them, Lord, that they would know you and go with you in power. Thank you, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer here today for the first time, come see me. I'd love to pray with you after. If you prayed online, there's a form you can fill out, and we'll send you a book to help you on your faith journey. But be blessed and know that God is with you, and God hears your prayers. All right. Our worship team is going to play us off, so I'm going to turn it over to them.
Father, I thank you for who you are, and I thank you for your Holy Spirit, because your love is strong in these. So, Father, I pray as we go today that you would bless us by your Holy Spirit, and that you would remind us that Elijah was a man just like any other man, yet he saw the miraculous. So, thank you, Lord. Jesus' mighty name, amen. And remember, you only have one life to live. Live it for Jesus Christ, and you will never be disappointed. Amen. Be blessed this week.